Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on this live demo session on how to automate access requests with Syskit Point. Uh, my name is Daniel, and I'm the product manager here at Syskit. And today with me, I have Alexandra, who is going to guide us through the demo. OK, so many of you already know us as a company, but for those of you who don't, let me briefly introduce Syskit to you. Uh, Syskit is a software development company founded more than 13 years ago. We create innovative software solutions for Microsoft 365 and SharePoint. And we currently have more than 3,800 3, customers around the world, some of which you can see here on the right-hand side of the screen. So uh, going further, uh, before we start, just a couple of housekeeping keeping items. All registrants will receive a recording of this demo session. And uh, at the end of the webinar, we will have a Q&A session. So please write your questions, use the Q&A function to ask any questions, and, and don't be shy. So uh, going uh, in what we will actually be discussing today. So today, we'll go through some of the key functionalities we have introduced in Syskit Point uh, with our latest release. We'll first briefly go through the support and management of distribution lists and mail enabled security groups. And then we'll dive deeper into our self-service workspace center and access request automation. At the end, uh, we'll also go through our roadmap and give you a heads up on what's coming next. But before we jump into today's topics, uh, for those of you who are new to Syskit Point, it's a governance platform for Microsoft 365 uh, that helps you get better control of your user uh, access, inventory, lifecycle management, and other important governance topics across multiple Microsoft 365 workspaces. So Point is an integrated platform uh, for Microsoft 365 covering reporting, management, actions, automated governance, basically enabling uh, our users and our customers to gain visibility and secure and control their uh, M365 environments. So by having this centralized inventory of all of their workspaces, users, permissions, uh, our clients can easily understand who has access to what and what are, uh, let's say, are there any guest users having access to resources that they shouldn't have access to? And they can stay on top of that. So, uh, and by speaking about this visibility that we do provide, uh, the first thing that we are going to be talking today about is the enhancements we did to our centralized M365 environment and inventory. Uh, in addition to Microsoft 365 groups, uh, Teams, OneDrive, SharePoint sites, Power BI, and security groups uh, that we have already supported, we have added support for distribution lists and mail-enabled security groups. This means that IT teams can now add or remove users and perform all management actions from uh, for those groups as well. So all, um, let's say, as with every workspace we support, there is no need for you to leave the report. You can just perform those actions directly there on the spot, and you can perform even uh, those actions and management actions in bulk. And if you enable that, uh, your end users can see and request access to those groups without even contacting IT. So the owners of those groups can approve or reject their, their, their requests, meaning that your IT team can now be focused maybe on some more important tasks. So we'll go uh, into a bit more deeper into this during the demo, uh, but let's now focus on the star of today's webinar, and that is our self-service workspace center. Talking to our clients, one of the things that was always mentioned is that every workspace creation needs to start with a search. So when we dive deeper into that, we understood that organizations, and especially those that are uh, larger and heavily regulated ones, often use complex ticketing systems to handle workspace access requests uh, for new, new, new workspaces. Uh, and their IT teams basically receive countless uh, tickets and waste many hours resolving every single one of those tickets because they actually lack the context uh, for different teams' admission rights. Although, uh, let's say, our existing clients 
uh, loved what we do with our workspace lifecycle management process, and it helped them a lot with managing Sprawl. They said that this ability to search if there is an existing workspace that is already matching the needs of that user would be, and this is what they used to, to, to call it a kind of a sprawl killer. So in terms of that, as always, we do listen to our customers and with, it, with their feedback, we built the self-service workspace center for access point, uh, for access requests into, into point. So how does this actually look like? So we, we kept the functionality that uh, our clients already loved and uh, we enhanced it with a, a self-service workspace center uh, in front of it. So we built uh, this into Syskit Point Teams app uh, because it's an interface that our end users uh, already know, and it's making them it's making it easier for them to adopt Point's extended uh, functionalities. For Point Teams app, uh, in terms of this, it becomes kind of a one-stop location for uh, that gives your end users visibility across Microsoft Teams, groups, SharePoint sites, distribution lists, security groups, and mail-enabled security groups. Basically, what this allows them is to, in a, let's say, couple of clicks, see all of the workspaces they are already a member of or the, where they are uh, an owner of. They can quickly search through a directory of workspaces that IT teams have marked as discoverable, and they can request uh, new uh, ones, or or they can re request new ones to kind of remove this sprawl and and duplicates in terms of that. And at the end, uh, they can request to join those workspaces, or they can request uh, new ones if they didn't find anything that is uh, appropriate for them. So this form of kind of transparency and visibility uh, that uh, this functionality provides is basically uh, impossible to obtain anywhere else in the Microsoft 365 e ecosystem. And as with every solution that we provide, ease of use, scalability, and performance are among the top priorities for any solution that we build. So this solution also supports environments of, of any size. So I can take, taking this a, a bit deeper and diving it, uh, a bit deeper into the visibility and search part of our workspace center, the first thing, uh, let's say, you most probably don't want your end users to see every workspace in your tenant. So as an admin, uh, the only thing you need to do is configure which workspaces are available for your end users. Uh, and then uh, you need to kind of say who needs to approve that user request. So by doing this, you will be streamlining the workspace access approval process and you will be increasing your end user's productivity while basically killing sprawl like that. Uh, from the end user side, what we uh, did here is we provided an intuitive interface for them to search and manage all of the access requests. So they can see uh, and search the entire list of workspaces. They can send requests uh, to owners or to request even public workspaces. Uh, they can get an overview of all of their active requests or let's say some of the pa past requests. They can get notified if the status of their request has changed. And uh, they can, if they are an owner, they can easily approve new requests without leaving the Teams app. So everything stays within the Teams app. Okay, but enough about talk. I believe it's better for us to dive deeper into this and how this performs on demo. Okay, first of all, let's go through the first part of this presentation where we discussed about uh, distribution lists and mail security, uh, mail enabled security groups. So in terms of that, we enhanced our centralized inventory to show those groups as well. So you can easily find uh, your mail enabled security groups and distribution lists just by clicking on some of these filters here. And uh, not just that, you can perform all sorts of uh, management actions right from the report. So if I want to, for example, add uh, a certain user uh, or to multiple groups as well, or distribution lists as well, I can easily do this from the report. So I can just click on add owners, select if I want this uh, uh, user to be an owner and just add the user. I can as well uh, do the same for 
uh, to, to remove those owners and members. Uh, but not just that, from, let's say, from the standpoint of uh, which user has, uh, a, is within a, a certain group, you can also go from the user side. So if I'm looking at a certain user here, I can easily see which distribution lists, uh, which groups they are a member of. So I can see this by logging into a certain user and just exploring where they have access to. So here again, I see uh, all of the mail enabled security groups and distribution lists, and I can even do management actions from this report as well. So that's uh, in short about what we have provided from an admin side on the, uh, let's say, uh, by enhancing this uh, centralized inventory. But the star of today's show is the access request. So let's let's dive into that a bit deeper as well. Going into uh, settings, from an end user side, what you actually need to do here, uh, we talked about not having the access, giving the access to all of the groups. So what you will be able to uh, need to be able to do is to create new policies. So uh, there is a new policy here, which is called access requests and you can easily create a new one. So the only thing that you need to do here is give it a name and uh, what is the desired approval process. So let's say I, um, Cisco Point actually comes with uh, a certain uh, access request policy, which is owner approval. So this comes built in, but if I want to create additional access request policies, I can easily create it here. So if I want to create one that is for uh, more confidential sites, which needs uh, se several steps of approval, I can do that easily from this from this side. So let's say that this is an access request for a very confidential site. So I'm just going to uh, add that add that here. So let's call this access request, which requires my manager and owner of uh, the, the, the workspace to approve. So uh, once I've uh, given it a name, uh, the only thing that, uh, else for me to do here is to ask which uh, persons actually need to approve this. And if I want to do that, I have all of my pre-built uh, approval processes here. And if I don't find the one that I want to apply here, I can easily create a new one here. So I'm just going to create a new two-stage approval process, which is going to be for my manager and owner. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say in the first step, uh, it's a manager who needs to approve this. And in the second step, it's an owner who needs to approve this. If this request fails, uh, or let's say there is a no manager, uh, I need to send it to someone. So I'm just going to uh, add a an user who is going to be doing that. And once I'm done with the creation of new approval process, I can add that approval process into, into my workspaces. So now this is a two-step approval process, which is going to be uh, created here. Additional things that you can do is you can decide which level you want, uh, let's say, which level of access you want to give to your users while, while they're joining uh, this workspace. So for example, if I want this to be only for members or I can add users as well, the same things applies for all of the uh, workspaces that are available here. So I can say for SharePoint sites, I even want to, uh, uh, to give them access to request a visitor access here. Once I'm done with uh, setting up of this new policy, I'm just going to save it and new policy it has been, has been uh, created. I can immediately go through apply policy, uh, to apply this policy, or I can do a bit deeper dive into sites which, which I want this to be applied to. So for example, we said we, we, we have created this for those policy, uh, for those sites and workspaces that have, uh, let's say, highly conf that, that are highly confidential. So if I want to just focus on the confidential ones, I can filter them here, and immediately uh, all of them. For example, if I want to add all of them, I can just click here and add additional policies here. So I can just apply new policy for the access request and add the policy that I have just created. So in this sense, by doing this, I have uh, made, made all of these confidential sites visible to uh, those users, but if they are, 
let's say, but they need a couple of a uh, couple of approvals before they can get access to it. First, a manager is going to approve it, and then an owner needs to approve that. Okay, so from an admin side, that was it, and I'm now going to uh, switch back to Alex to show you how this looks from the end user perspective. Thanks, Daniel. Let's just jump into our Syskit Point Microsoft Teams app. So as Daniel told you, I will be now I will now be showing you everything from the end user's perspective. So I'm logged in as Cork Blanc. I opened my uh, Microsoft Teams app and I navigated already to the Syskit Point Teams app. And as Daniel mentioned, we developed this app for our end users since it is an interface that they already know, love and use daily. Uh, so basically what I'm seeing here is all the different workspaces and within a few clicks I can uh, see all the groups, uh, teams or sites where I'm already either member or owner. Uh, I can ask to join these workspaces or I can send requests to create new ones if necessary. Another thing I can do, I can easily search through this directory. And let's now just dive in into how actual access requests look like looks like. So as you can see, I have this list of all the public and private workspaces and uh, the ones that have applied that have an applied access request policy. And when I say applied policy, I mean that only if Syskit Point admin, in this case Daniel, has applied or assigned access request policy to this this private workspace, only then it's visible to me. And that's important because you may not want to show everything in your environment to everyone. For example, if there is a team called uh, board members in your company, there is really no need for me as a marketing manager to see it here. So once again, all the private workspaces that I'm seeing are the ones that my admin has actually enabled me to see. Another difference between public and private workspaces is that within those public ones, you can join by clicking this button pretty much automatically. You can optionally input any reasons you have, and once you submit this request, you will be joined automatically. If, however, we're talking about a private team, then you need to click this Ask to Join button, and you need to specify the reason of yours to join here. You can also see that I'm now joining here as a member, which is which was set by admin, my administrator. If the administrator has enabled me to have a choice of joining between a member or an owner, I would be seeing it here. But in this case, I can only join as a member. Let's go ahead and send one request for the marketing group. So once again, I clicked Ask to Join. I will give my reasons here. And I'll go ahead and submit this request. What we are currently uh, supporting is are these following workspace types. So you can send requests for Microsoft Teams, for Microsoft 365 groups, for share, SharePoint sites, for distribution lists and security groups. And what's really important here that if you are an owner of a security group, you can you don't you no longer need admin's help. You can actually see them directly from this app. Of course, once again, only the ones that your admin made visible to you. So this process actually remains controlled. You can now see that my request has actually been approved. So my owner in this case, Eva, approved this my me joining to this group. And you can see an additional information about it if necessary. So if I navigate to this request section right here, you can see actually all the requests that I sent. You can see active ones, meaning that they were not yet resolved. And if I click on one of them, I can actually see who am I awaiting response from. When I requested this, I can see my comments, any additional information necessary. And if I change my mind, I can obviously cancel this request right here. And the one that just got resolved, for the marketing team. You can see that it was approved by Eva. In this case, Eva is an owner, and I would like to emphasize that once again. In this case, you saw that Daniel created a two-step approval process. In this case, there was applied only one-step approval process from my owner, and that is also quite a common case we get from our users because 
the workspace owners are actually the people that know their workspace is the best, they know their purpose, they know who is collaborating on what and who should be added to a team or switch teams. So that's also one general uh, use case you should keep in mind. All right, I think I pretty much showed you everything I wanted from the Teams app, so we can go back to Daniel and his presentation. So let's just go through a couple of items. Uh, I'll not go through everything here. Uh, just uh, wanted to mention a couple of items here. So first of all, that uh, something that we are uh, working into even now. So uh, security and compliance checks. So our goal with this is to save even more time uh, to IT teams uh, by pinpointing the most important vulnerabilities and misalignments with Microsoft 365 best practices and basically to keep uh, your environment secure and under control in basically one centralized in, uh, interface. So this will give IT advents and other stakeholders uh, a detailed overview of their environment security and uh, from the security and compliance state and it will help you make better decisions and basically react faster. So this will save time by proactively even sending notifications uh, about any potential issues that uh, need to be need to be resolved. So our idea with this is to give back some uh, even more time and pinpoint those most most important vulnerabilities. The other thing that we are focused on uh, at the moment is the rules for auto supply of governance policies. So IT teams with this functionality will be able to define a set of rules uh, for, let's say, based on which they will auto apply policies on, uh, based on specific metadata or some of the built-in properties and uh, for example, just just let, let's let's take one example. So if your team's purpose is external project, uh, you can apply access review policy, uh, external sharing review, or if the site sensitivity is highly confidential, uh, you can apply different uh, policies in terms of that. Maybe you want this to be uh, a monthly monthly access review. So uh, all of those things will be able to be configured through rules. And Syskit Point will take uh, care of those rules and auto apply policies when necessary. So, also, we've been seeing that organizations have a lot of existing workspaces, which are sometimes very hard to manage and apply policies re retrospectively. So, with auto apply, uh, those workspaces will also automatically be picked up and the policy and appropriate policy will be applied to them. So, uh, talking about those two initiatives in a bit more details. Uh, we have a plan to work on them in a very near future. So if you'd like to have early access to that or give us any of your feedback to help us shape this functionality so that it works best for your use cases, just let us know. Uh, you can contact us at feedback at .com and we'll be sure to organize a session with you to go through what are your requirements in terms of that. Uh, going also into the roadmap, some of the other functionalities that we are also looking into and that we've seen a lot of, uh, let's say, need from our customers is the support for our platform. So enhancing our centralized inventory under one cap to have more workspaces. So support for Power Platform is something that we will be working on in a, maybe a bit more distant future and also storage management. So managing storage is proving to be uh, let's say very, very hard. So this is something that we've seen a lot from our uh, end users and customers uh, to have some uh, functionality around that. So in terms of that, this is roughly, uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into each and every one of these uh, items here. So please feel free to contact us at feedback, uh, feedback at, point, uh, at syskit.com just to go through that if you want any anything further in uh, any, any further look into our roadmap. So we'll be sure to organize a, sh a session with you for that. Okay, uh, just a couple of things before we go into Q&A session. I see there has been some questions here. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, answer all of them. 
If not, we'll be uh, we'll be contacting you uh, afterwards with uh, answers to to your questions. But before that, let's just quickly uh, go through um, one of the other things. So for those of you that haven't tried Cisco Point so far, we highly advise that you start your 21 day free trial. It's very easy to deploy. It's just a couple of clicks away from seeing Cisco Point in action. So uh, you can basically add it to your tenant and see it in, in action in a, just a couple of clicks. So be sure to, to do that. And with that being said, uh, let's go to, to the Q&A. Alex? Hi. OK. OK. Well, let me help you with those. So as you said, we have had a few questions. Uh, the first one was, in which license will access requests be mm -hmm. available? OK, so in terms of the licensing for the access requests, so all of you that are on, uh, let's say, our data center offer or, or that are uh, hosting uh, Syskit Point on your own tenant, uh, on your own environments, uh, this is uh, available for you. This will be available for you out of the box. Uh, in terms of SaaS or, let's say, uh, that functionality, this will be available in the governance package. So uh, governance package will be uh, you will be able to have access requests within within your governance package. All right. Okay. Uh, I think we kind of answered this one with the demo, mm -hmm. but no no harm in mentioning it again. So can the approval process be customizable, or only owners can be the decision makers? Okay. Yeah. So as you've seen, uh, let's say we can create up to three steps of approval process. So you can customize this process as much as you want. You saw that uh, on our uh, demo uh, Syskit point, we had, uh, I don't know, uh, 10 different approval processes. So you can customize that and add the different approval process to different policies. So yes, this can, this can be customized as you'd like. All right. The next one is regarding provisioning. So uh, regarding auto apply of policies, how will it work with Microsoft mm -hmm. provisioning? Do we need to okay. have your provisioning solution in order for this to work? Okay, so this uh, comes to, to to the roadmap part. So okay, so uh, we appreciate that provisioning of new pro, uh, new workspaces is different, basically with every organization. And our goal is to enable that everyone has access to this functionality of auto apply of policies. So, for example, if you're using Microsoft provisioning or if you have some kind of in-house solution that you currently use, Point will also work with that. We will detect that a new workspace has been created and uh, point will then uh, automatically apply appropriate appropriate policies to that based on the rules that you have con configured so that's basically uh, we understand that this is very very hard to do so this is something that we want to help everyone with to apply those policies in as easy as possible all right uh, next one again from the roadmap for the security and compliance feature can i apply different checks based on the workspace type and will i be alerted about these checks or will i only be able to see it in your product okay so checks will be configurable uh, for example for some workspaces admins might configure that Violation is detected. For example, let's 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 take this for an example. So, uh, you want uh, a violation to be detected at less than three owners, and for some other workspaces, you want this to be configured for two owners. So yes, those checks will be configurable, uh, and this is this is the idea behind that. Uh, in terms of alerts, so we do plan to introduce weekly notifications, so that Syskit Point uh, admins would receive an, an email. And uh, they can even set up custom re recipients for those uh, so that you can have, let's say, so that you don't need to go into point every time to see those work, uh, those uh, checks in action. You will be alerted about those that are highly uh, critical uh, once, once they actually appear. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is regarding the same feature. Uh, can it be used by owners so they can check violations for their mm -hmm. sites and things? Yeah, so I see that there is, let's say, a lot of, um, how to call it, interest in this. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that. Uh, as I said, I invite you to uh, 
let's say, reach out to us so that we can have these discussions. There have been, uh, from the discussions that, that we had, there have been kind of uh, different views on this. So we would like to get more feedback as well. Mm -hmm. The idea behind this is that uh, dashboards with security and compliance checks will be available to both admins and collaborators. Mm -hmm. uh, admins will have a list of fall checks and uh, collaborators will only see uh, their specific checks. So admins will be able to configure which checks uh, are available to collaborators. And collaborators will also see the number of violations for their workspaces as uh, only. As said, this is something that we invite your feedback on. So feel free to contact us and we will discuss this to see what best was bet what best suits for uh, you. But what we found so far is that this needs to be highly configurable. So we understand some organizations don't want this to be seen by uh, owners. The other ones do want this to be seen. So just wanted to get maybe more feedback on that from your side as well. Exactly. Um, OK, do you have time for a few more, Daniel? I think we have a few more questions yeah. here. All right, so uh, if access is requested to a SharePoint site and approved, what SharePoint group is the user put in, in this SharePoint site? So if access is uh, requested and approved, so uh, it depends on uh, which access they have requested. So if you have ac uh, requested only to, uh, let's say if you set up the policy so that uh, they can only be members, it will be put into the members. If you uh, ask them to be, or let's say, given them the ability to provide, to request owner access, they can also do that. So it's, it is configurable, so you can select which group of, uh, let's say, Mm -hmm. users this will be uh, this will be assigned to all right and then we have two questions uh, sorry I was running late will this be in Microsoft teams as well so I can confirm that one yeah this feature will be available in Microsoft teams and the second part is when will users be able to complete access reviews from the teams integration sorry I didn't hear that well sorry uh, when will users be able to complete access reviews in this teams integration Okay, so uh, our idea with uh, Cisco Point is to transfer, let's say, some of that functionality that we currently do only in Point uh, to Teams app as well. So this will come in, uh, let's say, some shorter period, not, uh, let's say, in, in some future period as well. But at the moment, this is, as, as you know, not the functionality that, that we do support. So we are looking into that and we will most probably be implementing that in 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 a near future as well all right and does Cisco currently offer migration of same tenant teams channels from one team to another so in terms of migration uh, uh point is not going much into migration so this is not something that uh, we support and not something that we do plan to support in a near period so from our side, uh, we are we are not focused on migration as much. All right. Okay. I think we're quite on our out of time here. So if there are any additional uh, questions coming in, Daniel will sure be glad to answer via yeah. email. Yeah. yeah. So that's all from our Q and A session today. Okay, and that then brings us to the end of our session so once again thanks everyone for joining uh, us today on the webinar uh, as mentioned everyone who's registered for this will receive a recording at the end of this webinar within a few days and if you have any further questions as we pointed out many times for any of uh, our products or let's say for Cisco point or for our roadmap everything just contact us at feedback, uh, feedback at siskit.com and uh, we will be glad to to answer that so it was a pleasure having you all here today and see you next time bye bye see you. bye